Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and we've got a couple of awesome bits in from Team Group today, specifically the T-Force Z540 PCI Express 5 SSD. Very, very fast, Cop costs around 230, 240 bucks for two terabytes, so it's not a cheap item, but if you want the fastest speeds that you can possibly get, on the PC desktop at the moment, this should definitely be on your shortlist. Now, the problem is, first of all, you need a compatible M.2 slot. Not all motherboards out there have uh, PCI Express 5 capable ones, but most of the new AMD Socket AM5 platform does, and uh, also some of Intel's uh, current gen as well, but we'll see more support for that in future. The other downside to these things though, is that they can run a little bit toasty, but that is where Team Group's secret weapon comes in. So this is the Dark Airflow 1. This is a fan-assisted M.2 heatsink. Costs around 20 or 30 bucks, and it is designed specifically to cool toasty customers like this one. Now, this is a fan-assisted heatsink, so it doesn't just kind of sit on there and do nothing. It is fan-assisted, has a uh, dinky little 40 uh, millimeter fan on there as well, but the real killer feature here is that while that fan can spin up at very, very high speeds, and as you'll see later, it is pretty noisy, it is it has a PWM connector, so you can actually control it using your BIOS on your motherboard. So that's a really, really cool feature because it means that you can still have some active airflow through this heatsink, but you can rein in those noise levels. And hopefully what we're gonna do later is find a sweet spot where you'll be able to run this thing, get excellent cooling that keeps this thing from throttling, which it will do if you don't use a heatsink. And even some motherboard heatsinks can't cope with these things under full load for sustained periods. So very, very interesting to see how this performs. And of course, this is just a standard uh, M.2 heatsink. It, it is obviously made by Team Group, but you can apply it to any SSD out there, any other PCI Express 5 or PCI Express 4 M.2 SSD, this thing will work. So. We're gonna run through a few benchmarks. Um, we don't wanna to go too in depth there because PCI Express 5 SSDs have been around for a while. We know roughly how fast they are, et cetera, et cetera. We will run through some tests with this one, but we're mainly gonna be focusing on the cooling and the heatsink today to see if this thing makes a difference. So that's it from the intro pretty much, apart from me asking you to like and comment on this video, just helps punch me through the algorithm and gets me noticed. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting the bell icon so you are notified when I upload new videos. Very, very important and uh, don't forget to check out all the links down below as well we've got these two things uh, up for grabs down there and uh, you can buy them through various places and uh, don't forget to check out the other links as well so we've got some lots of other awesome hardware that I have tried and tested here on the channel I don't just put them in a pretty PC I actually test the stuff to make sure it's worth your money so that's it from me apart from thanking team group for sending over these bits and uh, let's crack on we're going to do a quick unboxing to see what you get in the box now and then we'll come to some con uh, conclusions at the end so we are just going to have a quick unboxing of these two things here and uh, we're going to start with the ssd to see what we actually get in the box so this is the two terabyte model costs around 230 240 bucks and uh, as we can see here we've got a couple of items in the packaging so we've got the SSD to start with, if I can actually get it out. So it's double-sided, and uh, as we can see here, the top side, usually there is a label going across here, and we can see the uh, Fizon E20, uh, E26 controller. And um, the other thing that we got in the box is the label, but it's actually a heatsink. So this isn't uncommon with SSDs. You do get a lot of them using thin copper heat sinks that act as a label as well. So if you want to use this with a, uh, a motherboard heat sink or something like that, you would put that on. And um, that's generally the way that a lot of them work. Not all of them do, but a lot of the hot running ones do. And especially those that care about cooling. So clearly team, uh, team group does. But if you want to just go with the SSD, then you might actually get better performance ditching the copper heat sink and using this thing. And uh, we'll just have a quick look at the dark airflow one first. And uh, first and foremost, I should say that I thought I'd seen this before in a uh, M.2 heatsink group test that I did recently. I highly recommend you check that out as well. But it was a very, very similar looking heatsink, but they are actually different. And this is the icy box M.2 heatsink. So you can kind of see why I thought that Team Group had just used or rebranded the icy box one. I mean, it's still a very, very similar design, but the Team Group one is a lot bigger and it uses a larger fan. And uh, the fan is still kind of embedded in there. So it's a, it's a similar design, but it's not exactly the same. So 
And of course, this one's way more attractive, I think, because it comes in black, so it's going to fit in a lot better with your motherboard. And here, of course, we have the 4-pin PWM header that you can connect to your motherboard, and that is going to make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to fine-tuning the speed of this fan. So the actual installation we'll look at in a second, but the other bits, of course, we get in the box are two heat sinks, one for either side of the SSD because it is a two-sided heat, uh, heat sink. There are components on both sides. And you get a little screwdriver to deal with the uh, screws on the heat sink like so. Uh, now, of course, you can remove this fan and you could use like something from Noctua or something like that if you're absolutely uh, obsessed about details and getting maximum performance. But we're going to see how this one performs today. So. Um, Actually, why am I undoing the fan? Don't need to undo the fan. I was talking about it and it made me want to undo it. I want to undo the heat sink down the bottom. And um, thankfully, my normal screwdriver does work, doesn't work, doesn't really work. So definitely want to use the one in the box. Um, I was just going to use my bigger screwdriver just because I thought it might be a little easier on camera than this tiny little thing. Um, but hey-ho, smaller one is uh, not too bad to deal with, just a little bit coarse on your fingers because the screws are quite tight. So we're just gonna remove these and then see how we actually install everything. So one more to go. And uh, there's a few instructions in the box. Uh, there's not a whole load of uh, guides or anything in there about where to place your SSD and that kind of thing. But in general, you probably wanna have uh, the, heat, the actual heat pipes, there's two on either side. so. The thing is kind of symmetrical. It doesn't really matter which way round you install it on your SSD. A lot will come from the direction of the airflow. So if you have a uh, heatsink, you might want to be drawing air or blowing uh, drawing air from um, above your graphics card rather than using waste warm air from your heatsink. If you're using an all-in-one liquid cooler, then you probably want to draw air from that side instead. So it just depends on where the coolest air is coming from and... Um, you could also, I guess, use it to cool the heat, the uh, back plate on your graphics card a little bit if you point it down that way. So that's just uh, another option. And um, looking at the instructions here, it's uh, fairly simple. So you'll just, um, yeah, so even the uh, the instructions don't really tell you which way to, to mount it. Like there's no cable or anything, although it does have the, the fan pointing outwards, um, which is basically on your motherboard, the fan would actually be pointing down towards your graphics card. That's what that's telling me there, I think. So uh, interesting way of doing that. But here we've just got the SSD located or sandwiched in between the two thermal pads and then sandwiched again between the base plate that we've got here and the um, cooler or the heatsink itself. So we are gonna try just placing the SSD in here to see how it installs and how it fits. So pretty much like that. You just want to have a, uh, a little edge meeting up to that little notch and then uh, to give yourself enough clearance down this end to actually install it. So what we're going to do now is just uh, do a quick bit of video to uh, show how to install it. Okay, so there we are with the installation and uh, what I like to do with anything involving thermal pads is just kind of give it a little bit of a squeeze. Not so much that you might damage the SSD, but just so we can kind of press that heatsink um, on the base and the upper part just onto those thermal pads and just compress them a little bit so they make good contacts. And the other thing we need to do is just to resecure those screws. So here's the completed SSD and I'm glad to report that it fitted fine in our MSI test motherboard with all its tool-free gubbins enabled and uh, here it is at the default speed in our motherboard so still a little bit noisy when you compare it uh, when you're sitting next to it and compare it to everything else but here it is at full speed which is between about 7 and 8,000 RPM definitely don't want to be running it at this speed it's an absolutely horrible noise but if we tune it down to about two to three thousand rpm it is much much quieter in fact i couldn't actually hear it above 
the rest of the system. So this is definitely the sweet spot if you would wish to want to hit this RPM all the time. Checking out the temperatures now then, and we've got the Dark Airflow 1 heatsink at full speed managing a temperature of 49 degrees C, which is super, super cool. That rose to just 51 degrees C at the default speed, which was much quieter, but still quite noticeable above a lot of the rest of the harbour in the case. Tuning everything down to 2500 RPM or thereabouts, and uh, that's the sweet spot. Couldn't hear the SSD at all, really, unless I put my ear right up against it. So if you've got any other fans in your case, they will drown it out. That managed at 57 degrees C. So it's a little bit of a rise compared to the default speed, but it's well worth it due to the lower noise levels. Now, if we go for the motherboard heatsink, you'll see that rise by over 10 degrees C. In fact, it rises all the way up to 71, which is only about nine or so degrees away from throttling. So if you have a toasty day or there's not that great airflow in your case, you could potentially see the SSD throttle with this heatsink. And of course, with no heatsink, you see the temperature rocket up well over 80 degrees very, very quickly. So overall here, it's a really good option to go for the dark airflow one heatsink. So moving on to the speed results now then, and we have the sequential speed at the top. Obviously no surprises here, the PCI Express 5 SSD way out in front of our PCI Express 4 example, which is a Samsung 990 Pro. And uh, moving down to the two random sets of results, the only one where the uh, team group had a significant advantage was on the read speed uh, right at the bottom there. Um, elsewhere, it's a, a bit of a toss up between the two, there isn't much in it, um, apart from a slightly slower result for the team group right at the bottom there. So what do we make of the team group T-Force Z540 SSD and the Dark Airflow 1 heatsink? Well, starting with the SSD, performed pretty much as expected for a PCI Express 5 SSD, excellent sequential speeds, and some surprisingly high random speeds as well. And I also like the fact that Team Group has with this thing included a label in the box, which is actually a small heatsink. It's a very thin slither of copper, but out of the box, the, there is no heatsink on the top of the SSD, which means that if you do add it to your motherboard and you put your motherboard's heatsink on top, you will probably see slightly lower temperatures doing that than if they had pre-applied any kind of label. And I wish more, more manufacturers would actually do that because it's quite hard to remove some of the adhesive labels once they are stuck on and um, they, you still see significant drops in M.2 in, in temperatures once you, even if you use a label with a heatsink, but it would just be easier if those labels weren't applied as standard. So the SSD, reasonable value, excellent speeds. I like the fact that the label um, isn't attached as standard. But the real star of the show here today is the Dark Airflow 1 heatsink. Now, this thing, you definitely don't want to run it at full speed. In fact, you don't even want to run it at your motherboard standard speed for the simple reason that both of those things are probably, well, certainly the, the default speed is going to be attached to your CPU temperature. So it will respond to the CPU temperature that's pointless because this isn't cooling your CPU, it's cooling your SSD. And usually, unfortunately, motherboards don't have an input for an M.2 temperature. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, so the, but there's an easy way around that, which is what we looked at earlier, which is just to stick it at a fixed speed that doesn't generate any noise and just let that do the cooling. And while you did see about a six or seven degree increase in the temperatures, you're still looking at temperatures below 60 degrees, and that is well away from any th uh, thermal throttling zones. So you will see better temperatures if you ramp up the speed, obviously, uh, but it's not worth it because the noise levels, um, especially at full speed, are absolutely hideous, as, as you would expect for, from a very, very small fan spinning at nearly 8,000 RPM. So the capability is there. I don't know why you would need that capability, um, but it's just what the fan is capable of, not necessarily what you should be running it at. So I would tune it down to about two or 3,000 RPM or about 20 or 30% in the BIOS, depending on your motherboard, of course, that will vary, uh, but just aim for around two to 3,000 RPM, and that is kind of the sweet spot. It will keep it well away from any throttling, and uh, obviously you can use this thing on any SSD out there as well, any M.2 SSD. It has everything you need in the box with the heat sinks, and uh, the only thing you need to add, it, add to it is an actual SSD, and it can be PCI Express 4 or PCI Express 5, whatever you want. So I would definitely recommend the uh, Dark Airflow 1 heatsink, whatever SSD you're using, especially if you are using a toasty PCI Express 5 SSD. And as we know, a lot of uh, a lot of the new motherboards are gonna be supporting uh, PCI Express 5 M.2 slots in the near future, and hopefully those SSDs will start to come down in price as well. So that's it for me today. I'd like to thank Team Group for sending over the goodies. Thanks to you guys for watching. 
watching. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. It just helps punch me through the algorithm and gets me noticed, and it's always great to have your support. Don't forget to check out the links down below where you can buy both of these things, as well as lots of other awesome hardware down in the description below, and uh, that's where the timestamps are as well, so don't forget to check those out. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back very, very soon. Thank you.